friends, your future may not be as secure as you think. Where will you be when the atomic bombs fall? The vaults in the Fallout series are underground shelters that keep their inhabitants safe from the deadly radiation outside after the bombs fall. You can secure your family's future by reserving a spot in a state-of-the-art underground vault from vault -Tec. That's right, Bob. Act now, and your family can wait out the horrors of nuclear devastation. But they also have a sinister secondary purpose. They're social experiments sponsored by the government and vault -Tec to see how people react to different situations in a controlled environment. Their results point to the conclusion, if you lock people underground for ages, they go crazy. What exactly did you think was going to happen, guys? <laughs> Gary! If you meant to prove that doing crazy experiments on people makes them crazy, then congratulations all round, especially in the case of these six twisted vaults. Greetings, Martyr, and welcome. If you're here now, it means you've been offered up as a sacrifice so that your vault can continue to thrive. After the door to Vault 11 closed, the inhabitants were told by their overseer that they would have to sacrifice one of their fellow vault dwellers every year or everyone in the vault would die. Thanks for that, overseer. Guess who was the first sacrifice? After this, whoever held the position of overseer was always the one chosen for sacrifice, and so elections for overseer became ruthless cutthroat affairs, which eventually led to blackmail, murder, and finally civil war that killed all but five inhabitants of the vault. It also turns out the Vault 11 experiment was actually to test morality against self-preservation. All the Vault Dwellers needed to do was refuse to sacrifice anyone, and the whole thing would be over. Dick move, vault Tech. Congratulations, citizens of Vault 11. You have made the decision not to sacrifice one of your own. You can walk with your head held high, knowing that your commitment to human life is a shining example to us all. Despite what you were led to believe, the population of Vault 11 is not going to be exterminated for its disobedience. Instead, the mechanism to open the main vault door has now been enabled, and you can come and go at your leisure. Still, at least five people survived unharmed and uncrazy, so partial success? Oh. Ready, Harry? Yeah. No, 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 wait! <laughs> The aim of Vault 12 was to study the effects of radiation on a sample population, which was achieved by the high-tech method of having a shoddy door that didn't close properly. The result was that everyone in Vault 12 died of radiation poisoning or turned into an insane radioactive ghoul. The effects of radiation on humans were scientifically well understood already, even in the 1950s, let alone the 2070s. You probably didn't need to irradiate over 500 people to see what would happen, guys. Some of the computers still work, but the only files are diaries and garbage. Typical Vault. Vault 19 in the Mojave Wasteland of Fallout New Vegas was part of a vault Tech experiment to see if the Vault Dwellers themselves could do all the legwork required to drive everyone crazy. This was achieved by selecting subjects who were already paranoid, then segregating them into two completely arbitrary groups, red and blue, then limiting contact between them. Of course, the first time a toilet gets backed up in the blue sector, it's blamed on the reds, and so begins the descent into paranoid conflict. The fate of Vault 19's inhabitants is unknown, but we like to imagine a cross-sector theatre production of Romeo and Juliet bridge the divide and they all lived happily ever after. That said, we also like to imagine what it would be like to wear a suit made entirely of 50 pound notes, so they probably all killed each other. And really, when you think about it, doesn't all conflict in history boil down to the eternal struggle between red and blue? Don't write that in your history exam, you will fail. When the war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Tech into Vault 92. They claimed the vault would be dedicated to preserving musical talent. The official line on Vault 92 is that it was constructed to preserve humanity's greatest musicians. Someone at Vault Tech clearly thought that sounded boring though, so instead they decided to use it to test out the feasibility of using white noise generators to implant subliminal messages with the aim of creating an army of hyper-aggressive super soldiers, who are also really good at violin. Except, and you can probably start to spot the pattern here, the constant white noise caused people to go gradually insane. <sighs> Disaster today. One of our test subjects, V920717, has murdered three other residents in a fit of unbridled rage, the likes of which I've never seen. Over half the vault's population eventually became violently unstable murderers and violently unstably murdered the other half. 
Yeah, who needs new music anyway? We've got a whole radio station full of 50s classics, right, Three Dog? It's me, Three Dog! How are you kids handling post-apocalyptia today? It's weirdly impressive that vault tech scientists got as far as Vault 106 before they got bored of cooking up creative ways to send everyone insane and just raided the stationary cupboard for psychoactive drugs. After the vault was sealed, Vault 106 dwellers got 10 glorious days of precious sanity before said psychoactive drugs were pumped in via the air filtration system. Some of them relaxed into a calm hallucinatory state, but others went violently hatstand. As the old saying goes, it only takes one bad apple to murder everyone with a pool cue. Hey! Venture into Vault 106 in Fallout 3 and you'll start to suffer the effects yourself, seeing hallucinations of Vault 101 residents as you fend off the insane survivors that roam the halls. You will want to go to the trouble of exploring Vault 106 though because it's also the location of the science bobblehead. <gasps> Unless that's a hallucination too! Oh, wait it isn't. Ah, Gary. Gary! Man, good luck if you got put into Vault 108, where the experiment seems to have been, let's see how much ridiculous sh these people can put up with until they all die. You get the impression that Vault Tech scientists spent a lot of time pulling the legs off spiders as children. Officially, Vault 108 was there to test conflict for leadership and power. The Vault's overseer was intentionally chosen to be someone likely to die soon after the Vault closed, the main power supply was scheduled to break 20 years in, and the backup power supply was designed not to work properly. Also, the Vault was stocked with three times the usual amount of guns and no entertainment recordings at all. You can see what they were going for here. What they probably didn't predict was the actual outcome in which a Vault resident called Gary used the Vault's cloning lab to clone himself a bunch of times. These Gary clones then murdered everyone else, so Vault 108 eventually became entirely populated by identical men all screaming Gary at the top of their lungs. <laughs> Gary! Yes, so an unexpected result there. I guess the Vault experiments were a success after all. Great work everyone, have a Nobel Prize. Those were the Fallout vaults we'd least like to be locked in come the apocalypse. Which do you fancy least? What do you think is the story behind Fallout 4's Vault 111? Let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more Fallout 4 from outside Xbox very soon. Thanks for watching! Should the unlikely event arise that the planet is linked,